All right, what's up everybody? Thanks for joining us today. I'm Bryce from Whitmix and I am joined today by the one and only, uh, one and only Corey Lambertson. Uh, you know him, you love him, he's with us here today. Uh, and we actually have a, a special guest with us. Uh, we have Chelsea Phillips. She is our uh, digital marketing specialist here at Whitmix. And uh, we wanted to include her in this today because uh, we want everybody to send a huge thank you to Chelsea because she's the one that's been um, kind of behind the scenes organizing all of these webinars for everybody. She's been, uh, uh, she's been uh, the one behind the curtain, the mastermind. So uh, everybody, um, either virtually or uh, in the comments, everybody, uh, if everybody would uh, give Chelsea a big old thank you and uh, a round of applause for putting on this, uh, what I think is a pretty incredible training series that we've done the last couple of months. Um, seriously, Chelsea, thank you. Uh, I, uh, it's been fun for us. Uh, I think it's probably been beneficial to, uh, to everybody that's been watching. So seriously, thank you. Um, I know you've put a lot of work into this, so uh, it yeah. is much appreciated. It has been absolutely phenomenal. And I thank everybody who's joined us. Um, it's been great to do this and I'm excited to do more in the future. Awesome. Cool. Um, so today we're going to be talking, uh, in case you didn't know, this is our, our last uh, for a little while, uh, our last uh, training webinar. So that's why we brought Chelsea in on this. Um, we'll probably do more in the future, but we are going to take a little bit, a little break uh, from these for a little bit. Um, but today for our last one, we're going to be talking about customized impression trays in three shape. So uh, today, Corey uh, is going to be walking us through the custom impression tray module. And um, uh, we're going to be heckling him the whole time. Um, so, uh, we are recording this by the way, so you can go back and watch this either on Facebook or on our website. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, well, let's all, let's all heckle Corey. If you have questions, uh, you can either comment on the Facebook live stream or here on zoom, if you're joining us on zoom. Uh, so feel free to ask any questions. And, uh, with that, I'm going to hand over the reins to Mr. Corey. Hey guys, thank you Bryce and uh, thank you Chelsea so much for putting this all together for us. Um, like Bryce said, this is our, our final our final actual webinar of the digital training series that we put on since the whole COVID-19 uh, began. Uh, we will go ahead and have more webinars, but they'll be in our traditional scheduled order that we've done in the past. Uh, so today to uh, to actually cover this, we're gonna go ahead and scan a model in. So I have a model already set. Uh, we're gonna use the uh, three shape E3 scanner. We're gonna scan in the model. And then from there, we'll go ahead and design a custom impression tray. Uh, this same workflow can also be used for creating a, uh, a denture base alone. If you just wanted to just create a base plate itself, you would do this exact same workflow in three shape. Uh, it's actually a pretty nice software to use uh, for uh, really just about any sort of free creation. Uh, it's similar to the denture module and the RPD modules, uh, just really no restrictions. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen. All right. So let me know, everybody, can you guys see my screen okay? I can see you. All right, cool. All right, so to begin, just like anything else in 3Shape, we are using the 2020 3Shape uh, beta uh, release. And so to create a new order, we're gonna click on the top left where the blank sheet of paper is, and we're gonna name it. So I'm gonna name this uh, test tray. And from here, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select on a tooth on the arch that the tray belongs to, the customized impression tray. So I'm actually gonna do this, this is a lower arch that we're gonna be creating the custom impression tray for. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select on a tooth on the lower arch. And then I'm gonna go over to appliance. So this is found under the appliance section of your order form. So I'm gonna select on appliance and it's gonna to default to splint. You're gonna go actually select one over to the right, custom impression tray. And then it doesn't really matter what material you use to fabricate this inside of the three shape software, but I am going to change it to model material because we would traditionally 3D print the structure. All right. All right, so from here I'm gonna go and select scan. 
and then the scan software should prompt. This is actually, I'm actually pretty excited today, guys. This is my first time using the Ferrari computer. This is a, really? Mm hmm Ooh, it's fun. She's fast. Yes, okay. first time ever. Well, right now she's slow because it's, <laughs> it's not loading up the uh, uh, scan suite software. Oh, that's cool. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we are. Uh, Super speed over here. So I'm going to go ahead. The, uh, the actual software tells us what to do. On the left-hand side, it says insert arch. Pretty self-explanatory there. And it says the front side, front side should be facing into the scanner. So if you look at the scan plate itself, we have the long flat back side, uh, which is the back where you want to place the back of the model. So place it in. And it is going to start scanning for us. This is where the elevator music cues in. What station is that, Bryce? It sounds great. It was eleva it was it was the <laughs> elevator music station. So remember guys, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask at any time. Um, clearly this part's pretty straightforward. Yep. You, you scan. Yep. Everybody's probably seen this about a thousand times by now, so should be pretty used to it. What is a three-shape scanner? What is what is teeth? <laughs> what is teeth? What is teeth? Teeth is. All right, so from here, uh, we can see we have a little bit of rough data on the bottom of the scan. I like to go ahead and trim off the base of this, uh, the actual scan itself. Uh, so we're going to select on trim on the top left-hand side, and I like using the plane cut option. So I'm just going to left-click hold and just move it across. Boop. From here, we'll go ahead and select on next. Was that little sound, was that the, was that the software that makes that sound? Boop. Yeah, that actually comes from the elevator music station. <laughs> <laughs> a little, a little boop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I wish actually the software did have sound effects. So like after you use the cutting one, it was like, it sounded like scissors going across like quick, 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 quick. That would be creative. That would be kind of neat. And annoying after the second model you scanned in. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So we're at the analyze section. We're going to inspect my scan, make sure all the data is there. This is exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to the design software. All right. So I'm, I am pretty excited to use the 2020 version of the software to create a custom impression tray because supposedly you should be able to put tissue stops in. I have not tested this yet. Yeah, I actually haven't tried it out either. I'm curious to see uh, how easy it is. Yeah. So just like anything in 3Shape, when you're in the removable uh, aspect, you're going to go ahead and create a path of insertion and then apply any sort of block out wax. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just tilt this on a little angle itself and hit set from view. So it's going to block out any undercuts we see or survey for any undercuts. So we can see the undercuts there and there. We'll go ahead and apply uh, select next. And then the software is going to automatically render the block out wax to block out any undercuts according to the path of insertion that we dictated. So I'm going to go ahead and let it run with it. The software is smarter than me. It has an algorithm that's way smarter than who, what I am. We're going to let the algorithm amen. actually, <laughs> amen to that. Now we're going to let the algorithm go ahead and run that uh, or dictate where the blackout wax needs to be. And we're just going to select next. Uh, you do have the ability though, if you wanted to, you can take it away. We can see I'm taking it away or we can see that if we're adding it, we can add it. Um, and also there is a, a uh, value setting on the left hand side depending on how far you want it to go for your desired thickness it will stop at that determined or predetermined thickness so we can see it kind of creates like a flat surface there we can tell it to go even further if we wanted to for example and eventually it'll bottom out or top out so i'm going to undo all of that we're going to let the software run with the algorithm and the blackout wax that it created for us automatically so from here we'll select next again and this is where the fun begins. Uh, so we're actually going to go ahead and start by drawing on our, our boundary line for our custom tray itself. 
So I'm just going to left click around. That was going to be a smart aleck there a second and uh, draw it across where the tongue would be. That would be funny. <clears throat> See if anybody would catch it. I would have instantly made fun of you. <laughs> I should have done it. <laughs> All right. And we're just going to keep connecting the dots until we get to the end. So when we get to the end, uh, we have the ability to edit this line one more time. So I know a lot of uh, individual, individuals, when they create their custom impression tray, they're actually going to go ahead and bring it up a little bit to let the actual impression tray material capture that border a little more effectively. So I'm going to bring it up a little bit. And for those that are watching this, and if you guys are doing custom impression trades by hand, you're probably thinking that, man, I'd already be done with this at this point. Um, but I can print probably 15 of these on the new Asiga Pro 4K printer in probably less than an hour. All right, so from here, we have a couple of material settings we need to actually program in. So the very first one is the actual thickness of the impression tray itself or the base itself, and then the impression gap. So I recommend any 3D printed materials to at least have a two millimeter thickness. So I'm gonna put that to two. Um, if it'll allow me, let's go to two millimeters. There we go. And then the impression gap itself, that is the space or the distance between your custom impression tray to the model. Uh, from, I guess from what I gathered, usually that's about two, uh, a two sheet thickness of wax. So we're gonna go ahead and apply that to two millimeters as well. If you were gonna create a, a simple denture base itself, you'd actually put that down to as low as it'll go, which will be zero. And it'll actually create a, just a simple denture base itself or base plate. So I'll put it back to two. And we're gonna go ahead and select preview. So while this is loading, oh, well, this computer is fast, isn't it? So, so we can see- Ferrari, no yeah. fault that for nothing. So now we can see we have our uh, our custom impression tray created for the most part, and we can see that there is a relief or a gap in between the actual model itself and the impression tray. Uh, on the left-hand side, we do have a window option, so we can actually draw in a window, which would create just uh, a hole or an area where the impression tray would not be fabricated. And then there is an area where you can actually add an extra relief for any sort of wax itself. Uh, for the uh, for the windows, I have seen people use this module for creating crown lengthening guides as well. So you can use the software and potentially create crown lengthening guides, which is pretty exciting too. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select next. This looks good. This is exactly what I wanna see. We'll select next. And now we have the ability to sculpt on our uh, custom tray. And we have the ability to add an actual handle itself to the tray as well. So I'm gonna start before I actually do any sculpting, adding or taking away or smoothing any material, I'm gonna start by adding a, a handle itself. So I'm gonna to go to the attachments function and I'm gonna change the group to custom trays. So it'll be always on the bottom or customized tray. And then I'm gonna add in my handle itself. So I'm gonna first go to, uh, let's go to, I like the barrel handle. Uh, and the reason I like the barrel handle is because usually it reduces the number of supports you need for 3D printing it. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to apply it from the insertion direction, or sorry, not insertion direction, the view direction of my screen. I'll put this on a slight angle. Hit it there. And then you have some dimensions to change the actual length of it and height of it. All 
right. Any questions at all, guys? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, actually. How far of the border do you want to be in the spline? Well, it depends on where you want your custom tray to land. So that's going to be personal preference. So if you want it to go all the way down, you can draw it so it goes all the way down, or you can go up. Um, everybody that I've talked to when creating their uh, custom trays, they have usually said about two millimeters away from the border. And that's to allow the impression material to actually capture that mucolabial fold. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply that attachment. The next thing that we have is let's go ahead and let's put some finger stops in here. So there's two different finger stops inside the software. There is a, uh, a small or just traditional side and then a large side, a large size, but really you can scale the small one to be the same size as the large. So I'm gonna go from view direction again. And then I'm going to go to rotate it and then we can change the overall length of it. And height of it too, if we want. So I'm just going to apply this to one side. On the other side of the software, I'm going to show how we can highlight and actually place uh, an impression coping well in the actual uh, impression itself too. So this would be, let's say, if you need to create a custom impression uh, for anybody that's going to have some implant work and you want to capture that surface properly. So I'm going to go ahead and let's add that in next. So that would be called a impression coping well. Select the add button to apply it. And this usually, let's say if there's like a healing cap underneath, you could actually make this transparent and you could see the healing cap and you'd be able to position this directly on top of it. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go from view direction for this again. Let's say we had an actual healing cap here. I'll select on it. And then we can change the length of it itself. Shove it down on, there we go. And then once you're done, you'll simply select on apply all, all attached parts. All right. So now we can see we have our handle, we have our um, impression coping, and we have a finger stop. Uh, you can see it's really limitless on what you want to attach to it. Uh, from here, we can go to the uh, sculpt on toolkit. And if you wanted to smooth any of like the junctions between the attachments and the actual application or impression tray that we've created, uh, I just do it because it makes it look a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth it out. It's just kind of like hitting it with your torch. Hit it with a little flame. If you wanna do it over here, you can as well. Except you do have to be careful. I think you can, yeah, so you can smooth the inside by accident. So let me undo that. Oops. Oopsie. And then let me see, I thought, I don't see anything here for a tissue stop. I wonder if it's under pre-manufacturing. Yeah, I think it probably is. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I missed under this stage. Um, no, this, you apply your attachments, you smooth it out if you'd like. Um, I like this barrel handle, and the reason why is because, you know, if we were to think of this of having a printer build plate itself, I can actually go ahead and attach this directly to the build plate and not have to have any supports until we got to the actual finger stop and impression coping. So just a little tip, so you don't have to have like thousands of supports on there and just create your post processing to be even longer. All right, so from here, let's go ahead and let's select next. Let's see where that pre-manufacturing is. Oh, it just says create prefer perforation. Let's go back to sculpt. Add mm -hmm. block out wax. 
preparation scan. I think that's it. Uh, it probably is. You can just you can sculpt to the preparation. And so just sculpt see. it in. Uh, look at that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder why they wouldn't just add tissue stops like what's in like like in the RPD module. You know, where it's I would literally think, just a just a click, like just I, click where you want it. I agree. I would think that it would be like a simple algorithm patch. Right. I mean, this works too. It's just it's just more. I mean, it's just it's more steps, and when it, it seems like you could just you know click. Yeah. Yeah. They can you can you can see that you can make it as big as you want versus I believe in the RPD module. I think it's just a three millimeter dot or four millimeter. Well, you can you can change the diameter of it. All right, so we'll call that our tissue stops, for example. Cool. So it still worked pretty good, though. I mean, it, it really wasn't that long. It was fairly fast. What do you think, Chelsea? What do you think of this impression tray? I What's your impression <laughs> of the <laughs> impression tray module? Dad joke. <laughs> I am a dad. I am not. Um, it, looks, it looks wonderful to me. I love your your um, tip on having that um, handle and being able to attach directly to the plate. It's it helps. Like, it helps. You know, Corey's full of those. You get to you get to know the guy, and eventually you're gonna quickly find out that uh, he's full of little tips like that. Tips and tricks and yep. hacks. Yep. <laughs> we could have a <laughs> webinar <laughs> called Im Impression Trays: Tips, Tricks, and Hacks. Mm -hmm. Oh my. All right, so this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select next. This is kind of fun. The next step, we get to add holes. So instead of actually manually drilling out holes in your custom tray, this is where, this is really awesome. Watch Hang on, you mean to tell me I don't have to use a handpiece and drill out holes individually? I mean, you can't. That, that's what we were saying. So you're telling me if I kind of, I kind of prefer that though. Like, if I'm picking up what you are putting down, <laughs> I do not have to apply holes anymore. I do not have to drill the holes. I'll be dipped. Bingo! You don't have to. So we can see now. Uh, it's pretty cool. We can see the actual all the holes that it created. Now we can tell it to actually make the holes even closer to each other, so I can make that spacing even less. So it's going to apply more holes or I can make the holes bigger. So let's see what happens if we make a bigger hole. Oh, no, nope. that's his, let's see, what's his, how big will it let us go? So four millimeters is as big of a hole as you can get. And then let's, um, let's make a bunch of little, a bunch of big holes. Let's see if that. I'd appreciate you keeping that at six millimeters for social distancing, please, <laughs> and thank you. Can you, oh man, look at that. That's kind of cool. Whoa. All hey. right. So, Let's put it to six millimeters to make Bryce happy. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're welcome. All right. Can you partially fill them in so they can wear a mask too? <laughs> Not at this stage, no. <laughs> no. Can you make those halfway? All right, let's put them back to the two, two millimeter holes. I'm going to do two and a half. All right. Speaking and then from of, here. Uh, Oh, go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. I was just going to say something stupid and off topic. I saw a funny meme uh, about social distancing. And it was like, like, uh, uh, it had a picture of like Sasquatch and it was like social distancing champion, like all time yeah. record or something like that. That actually is pretty funny. So we're going to go ahead and select next after we added our perforations and uh, we're going to get a warning, an error. That says foreign key constraint. I'm not sure. Site country ID, um, country without USA. This is an attack. I don't know what it is. <laughs> We're just going to go and select OK. I think it's dealt or actually handled because it's the beta version of the software. Uh, We're going to go and select close. Do you want to save the design? Yes. And then we're going to right click on the case like normal, advanced, generate cam output. Right click again, advanced, explore cam. And now we have our customized impression tray. I'm going to go ahead and import this into the Sega Composer software real quick. We have a couple minutes. 
Show it. So let's open up the Escape Composer. Uh, all right, so new build. Ooh, the Sega Pro 4K, 4K is on the screen, so we're going to select that. Mm, okay, okay. And then we're going to paste it in. Open. Oh, man, let's see how many we can fit on here, just for kicks and giggles. So I'm going to go ahead, and there's a little trick inside the software. If I wanted to have a certain face of an object to be touching the build plate or facing down, I'm going to left click on the structure and there's a rotate facet option on the left hand side. I'm going to select on that, left click on that. And then let's go ahead and tell it to be X, Y, and Z at a minimum, apply. And then let's drop it down 50 microns. So I know it's touching, oops. Uh, 0.05. All right, so now I know it's touching for sure. And we can fit quite a few of these. What I say earlier, I think I overshot. Like I said, 10 to 15. I think yeah. we fit 10. They'll be close. I think we'll be able to get, okay, definitely six in there. Uh, I think we'd probably be able to get seven if we were to try to squeeze them in a little yeah. bit different, but still pretty good. Yep. Um, and that's it. I mean, from here, I'm ready to print. I would just actually go ahead and open up the build wizard, send the job to the printer, and then move forward from there. That is it. I mean, this is like literally the easiest module inside of 3Shape. Um, if you're wanting to learn how to, I guess, maneuver through the denture module or RPD module uh, and you're intimidated with moving all the teeth, this module is a great way just to get kind of primed for it because a lot of the tools are the same, at least for creating your your uh, your border itself, your boundary line. Um, I mean, this is it. This That's it, guys. That was, I'm, I'm done. Super easy. Super easy. It's so easy Corey can do it. And I mean, it's so, so easy I could do it. <laughs> yes. Honestly, I think you could do it. I mean, it, it's so easy a caveman could do it. Yes. And I'm starting what to look it, like that with my beard. What commercials? Uh, I think it was Geico. Is it? Is it, yeah, they should make, we should start, we should, we should do a spinoff of the Geico commercial. It'd be so easy. easy button. So, so easy, easy. caveman could do it. So we'll easy. Do it about three shape. Let's see. Let's see if we have um, any questions coming through. I don't mm. see any questions coming through yet. Um, oh. Let's. Uh, uh, did anybody check Facebook? I, I don't have. Anything. I don't have it on here. Um, what material would you print this out of, guys? Uh, I would print this out of our very own Whitmix Veritrain. Boom. Person. That's just me. So uh, yeah, now you'd use your you would use our customized impression tray material. There are others on the market. I honestly like ours. Ours is pretty sweet. It's green. It's I like, like the color, honestly. I love fluorescent the color green. Of ours. Yeah. We fun. used to have an we used to have an orange right when it first came out, and it was like it was so orange. I mean it was like hunter orange, illuminating the sky orange. I mean it was orange. What do you what do you have against orange nothing Corey. i liked it mm -hmm. i liked it but it was like you don't really need two colors <laughs> you only need green i mean really you only need one the you orange. can never have enough color Corey. that's true so will will went ahead and commented on here um i'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen will even said he could do it so <laughs> i mean i believe it i know will can do it we're gonna have him designing custom impression trays here this week Yep. 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 Uh, I don't see anything on Facebook. This one will probably be shorter, I'd imagine, unless any but everybody just wants us to sit here for another uh, 24 minutes. We can just sit here. I'd prefer not to. I'm kind of hungry. Uh, oh, David chimed in. He said, "I've lived in Oregon for four years and still haven't seen Sasquatch." So he's definitely the social distancing he, king. Absolutely. He I mean, I, a he's out there. Anyone that says he's not. 
is a lunatic, okay? <laughs> He's out there and he probably has a family. And B, yeah, I mean, he is like literally the world champion, probably 50 years running. There's Sam, Squ- there's, there's Sam Squ- Squinch out there. No way. And if there really? was, I mean, we would have had to see him with the toilet. I mean, with the toilet paper shortage, he would have had to appeared at some point in time. Dude, Sam Squinch doesn't use toilet paper. I don't know. I mean, it's modern day. He's a modern right. Sam Squinch. A modern Sam Scranch. Probably has a moped. If anybody, by the way, if anybody gets that reference, please type it in and you'll forever be my best friend if everybody gets the Sam Scranch reference. I do not get that reference at all. No? Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you later. It's funny. It's from a television program. That's what young (laughs) trees are used for. (laughs) For the TP. There we go. Well, at least they got that TP situation figured out. They did not have a shortage either. That's funny. That's David's funny. got it. David's got it figured out. Yeah. Well. Well. All right. We only got 22 minutes left to kill boys and Chelsea. <laughs> boys and Chelsea. Boys and girls. Boys and ladies. Boys and ladies. Heathens and ladies. That is a little more realistic. Yeah. Um, well. Austin I mean, I'm, just chimed in. He's stoked. He doesn't need his morning comedy podcast glad we could provide (laughs) comedy relief (laughs) (laughs) i don't know about comedy maybe uh maybe tomfoolery yeah yeah more apt term Corey, where's thank you david Corey. where's the hawaiian shirt dude it's hawaiian shirt friday and here we are on friday and i'm not seeing a hawaiian shirt um chelsea isn't wearing one either let's just turn that on her though Chelsea's hey. in Colorado. Yeah, you also told me I didn't need it. This was last minute ad, Corey. Yeah, no, this is unacceptable. <laughs> no, so I was gonna, I was gonna toss it in, but I knew it was gonna be working in the back a lot today. And you know, I mean, all right. So I know Hawaiian shirts, you can, you're fluid in them, you can move well. I just didn't want to ruin mine, so I, I didn't want to. Yeah. It's a bathroom. Dude. You could have put it on, taken it back they have, off, and you're done. They I have changed. buttons. I change once a day and that's it, people. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's, it's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Are you the one doing laundry? Because if not, you have nothing to worry about, Corey. <laughs> no, we do 50 50. We only do 50 50. Oh man, I'm solely responsible at my house. Let's I see. hate, literally, out of all of the household chores, laundry I hate the most. Ask my wife. I, and I do it. I do it because, you know, it, it. has to get done and I'm not going to make her do all of it, obviously, but like, doing I, it is the easy part. The hard oh, part yeah. is putting it away. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. It's I literally think, like, I would rather shoot myself in the foot than put laundry away. See, that, I'd love laundry. I'll do laundry all day long as long as I don't have to do dishes. Really? Oh, oh dishes. yeah. Dishes, dishes, are, ain't, dishes, dishes aren't easy. bad. I mean, it's like you put them in the dishwasher. Splish splash. Oh no, slimy yeah. food. Mm-mm. Nope, not for me. I'd rather do laundry. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, the next house I built, you know, because I haven't. I mean, clearly I've built tons of houses. So the next one I build, it's gonna, it's gonna actually have a room. It's gonna be called. Get this, guys. I'm gonna call it a laundry room, and it's just gonna be. <laughs> a bunch of tables that is places for me to put my clothes instead of folding it, taking it, taking care of it. I don't know how I feel about this anymore. Now I have yeah, to, that's a terrible I, idea. it's a horrible <laughs> idea. Okay. I'm done. Austin says I only hang my clothes. Can't stand folding. Okay. Hang on, Austin. You mean to tell me you hang up your socks? Cause I'm pretty sure you don't hang up your socks and your undergarments. I'm pretty sure you I don't, don't hang those. Hangers with clothes pins on them. I hang them. Oh shoot! Past. He said, "Oh shoot, you got me there." I called That's it. right. That's right. We got you there. No, I, I, but I see Austin's point, and I definitely hang up anything that I can hang up. So, like my t-shirts, I hang up. Most people fold their t-shirts. Most of my t-shirts, I hang up uh, because it's so much. It's so much easier to hang up a t-shirt than it is to fold them. And then you fold them and they got wrinkles 
unless you do it like perfect and I'm not a professional. I didn't go to laundromat school for that. So I don't, I, I'm terrible at folding t-shirts. I'm hanging those things up all no. day. T-shirts get folded, put away in drawers, socks, undergarments, folded, put away in drawers, button ups, suit pants. They get hung up. Mm. I fold all of my button up shirts and put them in drawers. <laughs> You would. Now that that would drive me nuts. That <laughs> that that person is not a friend of mine. <laughs> that person's not a friend of every of anyone. <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, Austin says y'all got the STL for three D printing the T shirt folder. I guess it'd be easier with the cardboard. So that would be. Oh, I I want one of those. So I worked when I was in college. I worked at Cabela's, and uh, I uh. You know, with the, you know, if ever I was like closing or anything, I would, they had those like handy dandy t-shirt folders. Have you guys ever use one of those? No. They're like, they're a freaking miracle. I know. Are they one. sweet? Oh, dude. It's like, bam, bam, bam. Perfectly folded t-shirt every single time. It's amazing. You know, I'd probably enjoy that part. Yeah. You know, cause then it's like a little more mechanical. It's done right. It looks good. It's really like a game. You can see how many you can do in like a minute two or three no you dude you could do wait you could you could see in a minute you can probably do you can probably do 30 in a minute can you do your socks in that huh what <laughs> can, can i you... do my socks like that yeah okay here's a question on the topic of do you sort your socks do you match them 100 percent. you do i match them i fold them and i put them in my drawers oh no way I have a sock drawer, okay? Here's my thing. I only buy one one sock. So I get the same sock. So I don't have to do that. All my socks are, are, are except I have some hunting socks that are different. They go in a different drawer. But I wear all the same socks. That way, I don't have to worry about matching them. Is that not smart? Come on. You're an animal. What? I prefer cute socks. They gotta have designs or cute colors, or they gotta show some personality. Yeah. Well, I have specialty socks too. I have special purpose socks, so I have some like some like some some like funky socks, you know, like dress socks that have patterns on them. But those go in a different drawer. My main my my everyday sock drawer, they just get thrown in because it's all the same sock. There's no point in matching them. I don't know how I feel about this business. Yeah, no, I, even if they're all black, I match them. That's crazy. You know how you know how much time you could save by not doing that? Well, then you got to wake up in the morning and match them anyways. Not if they're all the same. You just, you just, you could, it could be pitch black. You could be blind. And you could just reach in. You just grab, grab a couple socks, and you know they're going to match. Does it really Put matter if they're covered with pants and shoes? That's also true. <laughs> Unless you're going to the airport. Then – that's, you always that's see that I, one. You always see that one psychopath at the airport that they take their shoes off and they've got like a black sock on and then like a green one. It's like, what did you do this morning? You get your you get your life together. I'm gonna start doing that at airports. Like the day the days that we fly when we can fly again, uh, for work, I am gonna go ahead and I'm gonna have an orange sock. I'm gonna have oh, a I'm gonna have, a sock and a pair. You take you, two. And put them together and call them a pair. No, I throw them away. Yeah. No. Yeah. Save the socks. We're thrifty. <laughs> Save the socks. Well, guys, I am going to. I'm calling it. No more okay. questions. Hey, we we you know we get we we stretched it out. I'm happy with this. Had a little bit of a fun conversation for our. The, our last uh, uh, training video for a little while here. So this was good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you all for, for participating and joining in on the video series. Um, once again, this is recorded and you get CE credits for it. So that's my outro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks everyone. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, hope everybody has an awesome weekend. Uh, seriously. Um, uh, stay safe out there and, uh, you know, everybody have a fun, relaxing couple of days. Uh, yep.
and uh, you know, uh, until the next time we talk to you, I uh, hope everybody uh, picks back up and, and gets back into the, their, uh, you know, their regular routine. So yeah. Thanks everyone. See you guys. Bye, everybody.